For our daily cancellation today, we consult Fortune magazine, which reports that Gen Z, according to research, may be psychologically scarred by high inflation. Even worse, says this research, the damage may be permanent. Reading on, Gen Z's early careers uh, have been stifled by a number of challenges, from a once-in-a-generation pandemic and a war on European soil to spiraling living costs and recession fears that have led to widespread layoffs. But according to new research, the economic backdrop in which young people are entering, the workforce could have a much deeper impact on Gen Z than a squeeze on their lifestyles. Dayo Sawa, founder of London's Awa Business School and a former lecturer at Cambridge University's Judge Business School, told Fortune on Monday that the ongoing battle with uh, inflation would have had a serious impact on the mindset of Gen Z workers, those under age, uh, those age 26 and under. Gen Z will be left with psychological scars from persistent inflation due to increased uncertainty and anxiety, he cautioned. A society where the young have little to no hope for the future is not a sustainable one. Not only will Gen Z be left with psychological scars, society at large will also feel the impact of those scars. So young people are not just dealing with a rocky economy, they are experiencing permanent psychological damage a terminal loss of hope, and a profound sense of unease and anxiety. Now, of course, we hear a lot about the anxiety of Gen Z these days. In fact, uh, The Hill just reported this month that Gen Z is the most anxious generation in history. And before Gen Z, we were told that millennials were the most anxious in history. Now, apparently, we have been unseated. We've been dethroned by Gen Z. Reading now from that report, a new report from data management firm Harmony Healthcare IT shows that 61% of Gen Z have a medically diagnosed anxiety condition. The report includes a survey of about 1,000 Gen Zers, or adults aged uh, 18 to 26, who struggle with anxiety about their uh, anxious thoughts. And while experiencing anxiety is nothing new for Gen Z, uh, more than half of uh, survey respondents, 54%, said their anxiety has been worse this year. And out of those with anxiety, 43% said they experience a panic attack at least once a month, if not more frequently. The most common cause of their anxiety, the future. Almost uh, most of those surveyed have said the future was the was the biggest worry, while 45% said it was finances. Almost one in three Gen Zers surveyed with anxiety said they used medication to help them manage the symptoms. Okay, 61% have been medically diagnosed with anxiety disorder. So think about that for a second. That's a that's a staggering number. 61%. That is how anxious these young people are. And, and many of them are having panic attacks once a month. I don't even know what a panic attack is. I, I've, I've, but but they're, they're having them all the time. That's how anxious they are. It's how difficult their lives are, how terrible the situation that they find themselves in is. At least that's what we're supposed to believe anyway. And listen, there is no denying that the economy is in rough shape, right? Inflation is a major problem. The American dream is harder to attain for young people today than it was for boomers when they were this age. My parents' generation, they were able to trade like two pineapples and a bag of flour for a single family home with a half acre of land. And I may be slightly exaggerating, but the point is that a certain lifestyle was much easier to establish and maintain only a few decades ago. There's no denying that. And beyond the economy, it's also true that our culture is in in bad shape. The situation abroad is even more volatile and so on. So there are challenges. There are difficult challenges. Nobody can pretend otherwise. That said, there is a real tendency to grossly exaggerate the difficulties that we face today. And it's not just Gen Z. In fact, I recently saw a viral meme that was uh, doing the the rounds on Twitter, and it has this whole uh, woe is me shtick except for millennials. And the meme shows Matthew McConaughey puffing on a cigarette with a shell-shocked look on his face, along with the caption, Millennials living through Y2K, 9-11, a plague, two economic recessions, and a possible World War III before they turn 40. Now, it's true that some of those things were hard. On the other hand, if you're including Y2K on your list of generational traumas, then it's clear that you're really trying to pad the stats, because Y2K is famous for being an occasion where literally nothing happened at all. As for the rest of it, uh, you know, some of it, 9-11 especially, also the government response to COVID, uh, qualify as legitimately catastrophic. But if you take a couple of steps back, you can see that we have had it relatively easy by comparison. So consider, for example, that somebody born in 1910 would have, before retirement, lived through World War I, World War II, the Great Depression, the Spanish Flu, the Cold War, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and a presidential assassination. That's only a partial list. 
Somebody born a century before that would have experienced two wars, or more like uh, 20 wars if you count all the Indian wars individually, before the Civil War, in which 2.5% of the country's population died. 2.5%, which is the equivalent of around 8 million American American casualties today. So imagine like uh, the entire population of, of Virginia dying a horrible death in the span of four years, and you get an idea of the devastation. So um, my point is, is not to downplay our struggles today. It's to put them into perspective and to make the point that every generation of human beings who've ever lived have faced turmoil and tragedy. This is the price of admission into the human species. It's a condition of existing on the planet. And in fact, it remains the case that most generations of humans, perhaps only with the exception of the baby boomers, who had it really easy, but everybody else, you know, they, they have had, by any objective measure, a significantly more difficult time than us. Certainly, they have us beat when it comes to economic hardship, war, disease. I mean, you should thank God every day that you didn't happen to be born in France in the year 1340, a few years before the Black Death would proceed to wipe 200 million people off the face of the planet. I mean, imagine watching as everyone around you breaks out in festering, oozing boils before they eventually die in puddles of their own vomit and blood, only to soon suffer the same fate yourself. And then you'll get a pretty good idea of, of why you are, in many, many ways, incredibly blessed to have been born at a time when a bad cold is the only, quote, plague you've ever experienced. Our friends at GenuCell have launched a new product called GenuCell 3, which works fast on your under-eye bags and puffiness. GenuCell 3 is smoother, more luxurious, and it uses advanced technology to deliver complex vitamins and minerals directly to your face for instant hydration. It's like Gatorade for your skin. This uh, new GenuCell technology keeps your skin looking young and healthy for years to come. GenuCell Fall Classics Package also includes a jawline treatment for more firm uh, neck and jawlines. It also includes GenuCell's anti-wrinkle moisturizer and deep firm Serum. Go to genucell.com slash WalshYT for extra discounts on this amazing fall package. Get your skin ready for the cold and dry weather. If you don't look and feel your absolute best, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. That's genucell.com slash WalshYT. Now again, the fact that hundreds of generations of humans have had lives that were something like a thousand times more difficult and arduous and brutal than ours, that doesn't make our own sufferings illegitimate. It just means that, that we should have perspective. And part of having perspective is realizing that no matter how hard you think you have it, you essentially live like a Roman emperor compared to almost everyone who's ever existed on the planet, and even compared to most of the people who currently exist on the planet. So then we have to ask, why is Gen Z so especially traumatized and psychologically scarred and anxiety-ridden? Sure, rent is too high, mortgages are too high, groceries are too expensive, but does that justify over half of an entire generation being diagnosed with an anxiety condition? Does that, does that justify monthly panic attacks? Does that justify uh, being dependent on psychiatric medicine to function? Like, it's not that bad, okay? It's just not. Now, those people in the past who endured hardship that Gen Z can't even begin to fathom they didn't need anxiety medication. They had never heard of panic attacks either. Like, that didn't exist. Panic attacks are new. <laughs> That's, that didn't happen in the 1800s. Nobody was talking about panic attacks. So, so what's the problem? Is it that people today are just simply weak? Is it as simple as that? Well, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's as simple as that. That's actually what's happening. As a group collectively, we certainly do not experience more suffering or more hardship than humans of the past, but we are less able to deal with with suffering and hardship. The cross that we carry is smaller, it's lighter, but our shoulders are not as broad and our backs are not as strong. And there are many reasons for this. We live in relative comfort and luxury, which has made us soft. We also, again, as a culture, are more secular, more nihilistic, more materialistic. And this has caused a kind of spiritual atrophy. It has made us psychologically brittle. But um, and, and things like dealing with the reality of death is, I think, much more difficult for us because we are secular, materialistic, nihilistic. Uh, you know, we believe that we're going to die and 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 fade into non-existence, which I think makes death far more terrifying. Uh, anyway, so there's a lot going on, but underlying all of that is the uniquely modern assumption that life is supposed to be essentially pain-free. So. 
We think that we are entitled to comfort, that we have the right to avoid suffering and hardship. And those are assumptions that our ancestors would have never made. Our ancestors encountered death and pain and suffering, and they said, well, this is what life is. It's not that they weren't sad about it. Okay, they were sad, they were distraught, the family member dies, something terrible happens. But they said, this is what life is. Life is suffering. We encounter that sort of thing, much less of it. And we say, no, it's not supposed to be this way. It's not fair. It's not fair. This is not how life is supposed to be. You see all these videos of Gen Z people that are like in tears because they have to work nine to five now. In tears about it. It's not supposed to be this way. This is not how life is supposed to be. No one in history thought that way. Everyone in history said, well, of course you have to work. What else, what else are you going to do in life? It's life. What do you mean? It's, it's not, not fair. Not fair compared to what? Most of the anxiety and trauma and psychological scarring comes not from the suffering, but really from this refusal to suffer. This insistence that life owes us something else, something better. Which in fact, when in fact it owes us nothing. Now, I'm not offering any kind of great insight here, but it's somehow an insight that has never occurred to a shockingly large number of people in modern culture. They have lived their whole lives without anyone responding to one of their complaints by saying, yeah, that's life. Get over it. Stop crying, you sissy. I mean, that is a message we should all probably hear once a day. And if you're having a panic attack because, you know, of inflation, like you, the best thing you can hear from someone is get it together. What the hell is wrong with you? Like you need to be able to function. This is embarrassing. Once a day, we should probably all hear something like that. And if not once a day, then at least once in our lives. But plenty of young people have never heard that response from anyone. Every time they whine about something, it's so hard. All they ever hear is, yeah, it is so hard. It's so difficult. Yeah, tell me more about how you feel. What they really need, they need their feelings to be dismissed. At least every once in a while. Keeps you humble. And now they're crippled by paper cuts and they're psychologically scarred by minor inconveniences. And this all means that eventually and likely soon, we will actually experience the agonies of our ancestors. As the saying goes, weak men create hard times. And that is the point in the historical cycle that we have reached. And it is for that reason that these weak men are today canceled. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.